Hello, Elisa Teach out here. Last time, we talked about things that we do during lessons to help your child feel competent at the piano. Today, we're going to talk about some things that you can do throughout the week to help your child feel competent and successful. Number one, praise your child when you notice improvements in their playing. For example, you didn't used to be able to play that fast. Wow, remember when you could only play with one finger? Hey, you learned a new song during your lesson. I want to hear it. Number two, encourage your child to share what they've learned during their lesson. In the beginning, students learn all of their music with me so that home practice is really just rehearsing what they can already do. Be amazed when your child can play new music for you. Number three, be honest and sincere with your child without comparing them to others. I'd love to see you challenge yourself more. Not, well, little Billy practices every day and he's on his fourth book. How come you aren't progressing as fast as him? Number four, talk to your child about new things you are learning or have learned. Normalize the feelings of frustration and insecurity that can come with learning any new skill. Just because you make mistakes or things don't come easily to you at first doesn't mean you aren't capable of becoming great. By the way, even Mozart and Beethoven and all of the most famous pianists in the world did have to practice to get to where they are or where they were. And finally, talk to your teacher if you have concerns. Remember, motivation can vary throughout your child's journey and even from day to day. Some final thoughts about competency. Remember my story about me growing up and hiding in the closet before lessons and rarely practicing. And when I did practice, there was a lot of crying and pounding and stress, <laughs> to say the least. Part of that is because I was comparing myself to my older sister who was extremely talented and, of course, was significantly older than me and could do things that I just couldn't do. Also, I was used to things coming very easily to me at school. I never had to study at that point or work very hard to maintain good grades. So when I was at the piano and things felt difficult, it made me question, well, am I really as intelligent as I thought? Am I as talented as I thought? Am I as good at this as I thought? Those feelings of frustration and insecurity really made it difficult to want to play the piano. What changed for me is when I began middle school orchestra and I started playing the violin and I could already read the music. So my teacher would uh, had me playing difficult music. I got to be first chair violin. Oh, maybe I have something special that other people don't have. Whenever we would have rhythm playoffs, I would always win. In fact, there was one time where people were so upset at me for always winning that I actually made a mistake on purpose. <laughs> to avoid everyone being mad at me because I was really, really good at rhythm. That was sort of the beginning point where I caught on fire wanting to practice my instruments because I felt like I was good at it. So the moral of the story is that competence is very important for meaningful motivation and wanting to continue on. I hope this is helpful. In the next video, we're going to talk about relatedness, which is the second uh, thing that we need to have for meaningful motivation. See you then.